Hi, I'm Patsy Thompson and today we're going to take you through a short tutorial on getting yourself set up to do some free motion machine quilting. Now this is really geared toward the beginner free motion quilter, but if you've got a little bit of free motion quilting under your belt already, there may be some information that will be helpful to you as well. Now you probably know you can do free motion machine quilting on a long arm quilting machine, on a mid arm machine, or also on a home domestic sewing machine. All the demos that I'm going to do for you are going to be on a home domestic sewing machine. We'll be creating all our quilting motifs by moving our quilt across the machine bed. This form of quilting is called push through quilting and it is different than free motion quilting on a frame system. Now free motion machine quilting is really fun. I mean really, really fun. So it's really a good skill to add to your design repertoire because it's an easy way to add a lot more design punch to your quilts. But go into it knowing and expecting that it's going to take you a lot of practice. We're all used to writing and drawing by moving a pen across a piece of paper that is stationary. And think of how many hours of practice it took for us to learn those skills. Well, in free motion quilting, we'll be working in the opposite fashion. We'll stitch all our quilting designs by moving a quilt, which is the same as the piece of paper, while the pen is held stationary. Now don't be surprised if this feels a bit awkward at first, and it will, because we'll be working backwards from what we're used to. Now in addition to a sewing machine that's capable of doing free motion work, there are some other tools you're going to need, and that's what we're going to be talking about next. The first thing we'll talk about is the type of special foot you'll need for free motion machine quilting. What I'm holding here is a free motion foot, and as you can see, it looks quite different from a walking foot. Now this second foot is a darning foot, and it will also work for free motion work. Some free motion feet come with an open toe, and some come with a closed toe, but both will work. Personally, I prefer an open toe, so I've cut a small hole in the center of my darning foot. Now the next thing you'll need is a way to drop or suspend the feed dogs on your sewing machine. You're probably asking yourself, what the heck are feed dogs? Let's take a look. These teeth that you see moving here are called the feed dogs, and their job is to help advance the bottom fabric layer. Now we don't need that feature when we're doing free motion work, so we can drop them or suspend them so they can't interfere with what we're trying to do. Different sewing machines have different methods to drop or suspend the action of the feed dogs. On my machine, it's as easy as simply pressing this button. Now they're up, and now they're down. Now they're up again, and now they're down again. Check in your sewing machine manual to find out how easy it is to drop the feed dogs on your machine. Once you start quilting a really large quilt on your home domestic sewing machine, you will really begin to appreciate the challenge of moving a big, bulky quilt across your machine bed and through that small throat space. Part of the challenge is the sheer weight of the quilt, part of it is the bulk of the quilt, and part of it is the challenge of fitting this big quilt into that small harp space. We'll cover all this in more detail once we get started, but know that the process will be far easier if you have a nice, flat, level surface on which to move your quilt. I use a plexiglass extension table that fits right up against the throat of my machine, and I would highly recommend this if your machine does not sink into a cabinet. The smallest table I would get is an 18 by 24 inch table. And we need to talk about one more thing before we get into preparing the quilt itself. We need to talk about sewing machine tension. In general, free motion machine quilting will necessitate a lowering of your top sewing machine tension. How much do you lower it? <laughs> Who the heck knows? It's going to be different for every machine and it's going to be different for every thread combination you come up with between what you have in your top needle and what's in the bobbin. But to be honest with you, it's really not a big deal, and it's very, very important that you get comfortable with making adjustments to your tension dial. 
I keep a few throwaway quilt sandwiches by my machine and I get my tension issues worked out on these so I don't risk messing up a good quilt that I care about. If I need to lower my tension, I just drop it a little bit, maybe a half a turn, and then I stitch a bit and look at my stitches. If that's not enough, I lower the tension again and stitch again. This is all trial and error, but the more you get into the habit of doing this, you'll develop a real understanding of your machine and you won't be afraid of touching that dial. So enough about the sewing machine. Let's talk a bit about preparing the quilt. You're going to need to baste those three layers together, and with machine quilting, this is not a task that you want to take lightly. If you pin baste, those pins will need to be very close together, because if they're not, you'll get some unsightly puckers on the back side of your quilt. And don't forget that if you pin baste, you're going to have to stop your stitching and remove a pin every single time you come close to a pin, and that's an awful lot of stopping and starting. For me, that has become just way too big of a hassle. I spray baste my quilt using a wall system, and I'll tell you, the system works so well and bonds those three layers together so well that when I'm moving the quilt across my machine bed, it's moving as if it's just one layer. This is so convenient, I don't have to crawl around on the floor anymore, and it really does help to minimize the risk of puckers on the back side of the quilt. After I've ironed my backing fabric and the quilt top itself really well, I pin the backing fabric to my basting wall with the good side of the fabric facing the wall. I then spray this layer with basting spray, and I am using 505 basting spray here. Notice that there are newspapers lining the outer edge of my quilt, and these keep any excess spray from landing on my wall and getting it sticky. The next layer is my batting layer. I unfold every single fold as I open it from its packaging, and then I throw it into the dryer on permanent press setting for 3 to 15 minutes to get all the wrinkles out. Next, I smooth my batting onto the quilt back fabric. If I get a wrinkle as I work, it's no big deal because I can easily pull it back and re-smooth it out. After I've sprayed my batting layer with 505 basting spray, I smooth my quilt top onto the batting layer. This whole process is very quick and I can spray baste a queen size quilt top in about 20 minutes. And there you have it. You are all prepared to begin free motion quilting. Get ready to burn some rubber because in our next tutorial we're actually going to show you how to free motion quilt on a real quilt. So long.